The term solarization is used to describe the effect of tone reversal observed in cases of extreme overexposure of the photographic film in the camera. The Sabatier effect, also known as pseudo-solarization, is a phenomenon in photography in which the image recorded on a negative or on a photographic print is wholly or partially reversed in tone, not by the camera but by the second exposure during development in the darkroom. Still, there is continuing debate and confusion about the accuracy term. Solarization is developed again. In many amateur darkroom publications and digital media, the term pseudo-solarization has been shortened to solarization. Today's conflation of solarization is mainly due to Man Lay. He rediscovered this process in 1929 and called solarization instead of Sabatier effect. Oops. The solarization effect was already known to daguerreotypists, and is one of the earliest known effects in photography. In 1840, just one year after the invention of photography, Dr. Samuel Bemis, American daguerreotypist took a picture of view of a barn in New Hampshire. In this image, the sky begins to turn blue because of the overexposure of the camera, what we now refer to as solarization. Most likely, the effect was first observed in scenery photographs including the sun. The sun, instead of being the whitest spot in the image, turned black or gray. In other images such as Gustavi, the sun at zenith, the black sun alone was solarized. John William Draper, American daguerreotypist, was the first to call the overexposure effect solarization in 1840. He instructed that human subjects must temporarily cover their white bodice area with the darker material, so that the white area is not solarized by overexposure. Sir John Herschel describes a similar effect in 1842, in his personal notes on the cyanotype process. If very long exposed the picture is positive the parts where the light has acted being actually paler than the original foam tint. This I call over sunning or solalizing. On September 4, 1857 British photographer William Jackson wrote to the Journal of the Photographic Society of London and became the first to publish on an account of the phenomenon, later called Sabatier Effect five years later. That letter was entitled on a method of reversing the action of light on the collodion film, and therefore producing transparent positives. He also sent the sample solarized images to the Photographic Society, mentioning Curious. In his 1859, L'Art du Photographe, H. de la Blancher became the first person to discuss the process in a full-length work. He appreciated Jackson's letter and noted that he had replicated the experiment. Thank you. It was described again in 1860, Rutherford and C.A. Seeley, separately, in successive issues of the American Journal of Photography, and in the same year by Count Skouloff in the French publication Cosmos. On October 26, 1860, Armand Sabatier, French doctor and amateur photographer, described the process of obtaining direct positives. He called it, curious sun writing or, pseudo-solarization. The name of the author was erroneously spelled with double T, and thus the effect is hence known as the Sabatier effect in most literature. Sabatier described correctly the phenomenon in 1862. However, Sabatier could not find an explanation for the phenomenon. The effect was usually caused by accidentally exposing an exposed plate, or film to light during developing. In 1864 John Toller dismissed solarization as an imperfection or an error in his book, The Silver Sunbeam. This trouble does not occur very frequently. It is made manifest by the redness which the highlights are one to assume during development, when the exposure has been either too long or the light too brilliant, as in the copying process by the direct rays of the sun. This evil can be remedied by avoiding the causes, or by the use of a bromoiodized collodion, or of citric acid in the developer. In 1895 the artist and photographer Edgar Degas, 
tried an early artistic experiment with the effect. In 1929 the artist Man Ray perfected the technique which was accidentally discovered in the dark room because of Lee Miller accidentally exposing his film in the dark room. Miller had come to him as initially a student, but was soon his assistant, lover, model and collaborator in his photography. Lee Miller herself explained the origins of this technique. Something crawled across my foot in the dark room, and I let out a yell and turned on the light. I never did find out what it was, a mouse or what. Then I quickly realized that the film was totally exposed. When he looked at them, the unexposed parts of the negative, which had been the black background, had been exposed by this sharp light that had been turned on and they had developed, and came right up to the edge of the white, nude body. But the background and the image couldn't heal together, so there was a line left which he called a solarization. Though a romantic story, it is probable that Miller embellished the tale over the years of telling it and the happy accident was probably caused by a faulty dark room light. Man Ray, however, was methodical in recreating the technique to use in his portraiture discovering which composite parts of the process controlled different aspects of outcome. Though he initially tried to keep the workings of process secret, his colleague Morris Tabard published the process in 1933. Unfortunately the friendship between men ended. A book popularizing the technique to professionals and amateurs alike, Photographic Amusements, was published in 1937. The technique was adopted and used by a succession of photographers, primarily Francis Brugier, Win Bullock, Raoul Eubank, and Edmund Kesting. Minor White made photograph of a winter scene, The Black Sun 1955, as a result of the shutter of his camera freezing in the open position, producing severe overexposure. Ever the technician, Unsell Adams writes in examples that he had visualized the scene he encountered in Owens Valley, California, with a surreal black sun and intentionally overexposed the negative to achieve the effect. It can be stated that solarization can only be observed if the photographic layer is capable to create a latent image inside the halide grain under exposure by actinic radiation. Many explanations have been given but until further notice the solarization was until 1929 generally understood as a combination of two main processes, the coagulation and the regression process. The regression process theory was formulated by H. Lupo Kramer in 1911, based on research by F. Herter, V. C. Driffield and H. Luggan. The overexposure generates a bromide pressure that escapes from the internal sphere and permeates to the surface where it oxidizes the latent image situated there. This destroys the latent image, because only silver on the surface can be developed. H. Ahrens published in 1925 a paper about reversal effects in which he concluded that solarization is based upon the finding that under increasing exposure the latent image successively coagulates and thus increases the size of each particular silver speck. This again causes the silver speck to lose its catalytic effect for the development. H. Kieser published in 1929 a paper in which he speculated about the possibility of bromide migration by defect electrons. The bromide migration to the surface by overexposure forms a bromine condensation, resulting in bromine molecules or bromine atoms diffusing to the silver specks of the latent image. All photographic films and papers have a maximum density point. When they pass this point, Changes within the crystals cause the latent image to be destroyed and reduce the area back toward zero density on the developed negative. Those areas become translucent on film or white on most photo papers. The second development in a surface developer will now attack those grains which remained unchanged by the first exposure so that an image reversal will occur. An exposure of one second to a 25-watt incandescent lamp at 2 meters distance at around the end of the first minute of a 2-minute development.
Stop agitation at least 10 seconds prior to exposure. As light source also an enlarger without negative in a carrier can be used. High contrast papers for a more dramatic effect. Color prints, more careful control of temperature. In 1970, Agfa marketed Agfa Contour Professional Film, which simplified the process of obtaining consistent results for images that looked similar to pseudo-solarized images and therefore it was widely used in art. As of 2002, Agfa Contour Film was no longer being produced. Today, Achieving a solarization look is much easier through editing software such as Adobe Photoshop, Elements or the GIMP. Select an image and open it in Photoshop, convert it to black and white. Duplicate the background layer. And set the blending mode to exclusion. You can then adjust the effect with either the levels or curves adjustments. While both levels and curves can achieve the intended results, I recommend the precision of curves, which allows us to select individual points along the curve and adjust targeted areas of the image. You then need to draw an inverted V start at the bottom left, click once at output 0, input 0. Then hold down shift and then click again in the center at the top. Then finish off by clicking the bottom right hand corner. Create another curves layer. Manipulate the curve to lighten, darken your image. At this stage every single photo will be different. As you can see in my example I only slightly darkened my image, small bend but a large effect. If you want color, duplicate the original image and then place it on top. Change the transfer mode to color. In the beginning solarization was dismissed as a nuisance. But in 1929 Man Ray was successfully used the technique in his photography. Since then it was not an error but a new artistic means in making pictures. Today achieving a solarization look is much easier with Photoshop or Lightroom. Why not try?